In this video, we're going to continue building out our account page. As always, you can find the article link in the description below for all the code snippets that we're going to use in this tutorial. So we're going to start by creating our user profile page. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's copy this code snippet for our page.tsx file and inside our VS code, navigate to source, app, dashboard, and let's create a new folder called account and create a new file called page.tsx. And let's go ahead and paste the code snippet. And this is just to get us started. And here we're getting our get user me loader, which is responsible for loading our user data that we'll be able to pass to our form components that we are yet to create. We're going to start by building the profile component first. So let's go ahead, navigate to your components folder. So inside your components folder, navigate to forms and create a new file. And we're going to call it profileform.tsx. Click enter. Let's go ahead and copy the code snippet found in our complementary blog post. Let's go ahead and paste it in. And here we just have our UX code for our form. We haven't really implemented any of the logic, which we'll do together. Nor is that you see the text area in red. That's because we need to still install it from Shetcn UI. If you ever forget the command to install individual components, you could go to shetcnui.com website and take a look at any of the components you want to install. In our case, it's text area. So if you click on text area and you're going to see the command, all we have to do is do npx shetcn slash ui at latest add and the name of the component that we want to add. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Making sure that you're in your front end folder of your Next.js project, go ahead and run npx shetcn ui command to install our text area. Once installed, you see that the red squiggly goes away. Fantastic. You could quickly browse through the component, but all it is is just a couple of basic inputs to store our username, email, count of credits that we may have, as well as place for us to sh show our first name, last name, and our bio. And we have our awesome submit button that we created in the previous videos. Now that we have our form, navigating back to our page.tsx file, and let's go ahead and undo this comment here and as well as here. Now, when we navigate to our account page, you should see this form. And currently all you see is our username and our email, but our credits, our first name and last name and our bio does not exist in our content type. So this is something that we have to do. So let's go ahead and do that now. Once you log into your Strapi admin, we could go to content type builder and on the users, we're going to add a couple of new fields. So let's click at add another field to this collection type. We're going to say text. We're going to keep it short text and it's going to be first name. Then let's click add another field. We're going to say text again, short text, last name. Finally, let's click add another field. We're going to say text, but this time it's going to be long text and it's going to be our bio. And we're going to add another field. This time it's going to be a number field. Make sure to choose integer. We're going to call it credits and very important, navigate to advanced settings and for default set the value of zero. This is going to be default number of credits that your user will have when they create their account. Let's click finish and save. Now we're able to navigate to content manager under users. We're going to see our test user. And you could go ahead and add your first name, Paul, my last name, Bratz, bio, you are all awesome. And we're going to, for credits, say we have 10 credits. I'm going to click save. Now that we are updated our user profile, when we navigate back to our front end and refresh, notice that we have our form pre-filled. We have our first name, last name, our user bio, including the credits that we have. So now let's work on the functionality to be able to update our profile. Since this is not our first rodeo, we know that we have to create a server action to handle our form submission. So let's go ahead and create a new file called profile actions. So in our code, let's navigate to our data folder actions, create new file and call it profile actions.ts. And let's go ahead, copy this code snippet. And if people ask me, Paul, why did you provide these code snippets? Because if you had to watch me type, it would take forever. So taking a look at the code here, we creating our update profile action that's going to expect user ID 
and I'll tell you how we're going to get this in just a moment. We'll have our previous state so we could return our errors from our server action to our front end code and we're going to pass our form data that we want to submit. And our payload, it's going to be our first name, our last name, our bio, and we're going to get all that information from our form data that's going to be passed to this update profile action when we submit the form. And all we're going to do right now is just console log the payload before writing any logic of being able to submit this to Strapi. So now let's navigate to our profile form. And at the top here, after the React import, we're going to import use form state that we're going to use to be able to catch the form state that we're getting back from our user action. And let's go ahead and import our update profile action that we just created. And here, let's add our initial state for our form. We're going to have data, which is null, strappy errors, and a message. Since we're going to be showing our strappy errors, let's go ahead and import our strappy errors component that we previously created. Now let's scroll down here and we want to update our user. So every user that we have, for instance, I'm a user of the app, my user account is associated with a particular ID. If it was a different user signed in, they would have a different ID. So we want to be able to pass that ID to Next.js. One way we could do that is we, we could create an input and I will just use any input and it's going to be type hidden and here we could pass the ID. And then we could get that ID in our form action by doing something like this. ID equals raw form data dot ID. And this is one way to pass the data. And I'm going to show you that this works. So we are constantly logging our payload. So let's go back to our front end. But first, we want to set up our form state. And here, for now, we'll just console.log our form state. And here, under actions, we're just going to say action equals form action. Fantastic. So this is complaining because if you go to profile action, we're passing here at the top our user ID. Let's just comment that out for now, and we'll come back to this. And after we uncomment user ID here, make sure let's comment out this console lock, which we will come back to. And when we jump back to our profile form, notice that this stops complaining. So now when I submit the form, we should see us getting this user ID passed to our profile action. And we will see it in our payload under this ID because we're getting it from our form. So let's test it out. So here in my front end, I'm going to say Polly Berry. I don't know why I find that funny and say hello. And when I update this, it's not going to update our data in our database yet because we didn't hooked up this object, but we should see the console of our payload. So I click update. And taking a look at our profile, here we see our data that we want to submit. We see our first name, last name, bio, and our ID. And passing the ID is perfectly fine this way. But I want to show you another method that you could use. So let's take a look. And before we do that, I'm going to just redo this. So undo all the stuff that I did here. Perfect. Because we're actually going to get a user ID through this prop. How, you may be asking, let me show you. But first, let's back in our profile form. We're going to go here. And this is complaining because it's expecting that user ID, which we're not providing. So let's go ahead and do that. And to help us do that, if you go to Next.js documentation under server actions and find dot bind, you'll be able to see an example where you're able to bind additional data that you want to pass to your user action. So that's what we're going to do. I'm literally going to copy the snippet and back here in our code, right before this form state, we're going to say update user with ID and we're going to say update profile action dot bind. We have a user ID available from our data dot ID and we're going to take this and we're going to pass it into our use form state here and everything else stays the same. Perfect. So now when we go back to our profile action, what are we going to do? We're going to console log our user ID and we already have it here. So let's resubmit our form and see if we're getting our user ID data. So I'm just going to keep everything the same, click update profile. And now when we take a look at our response, we see that we are passing our user ID, which is uh, pretty awesome. 
So you have two ways of passing data, either doing it via form or using the bind method. Now that I know everything works, I'm gonna delete these unnecessary console logs and going back to our profile form, we're going to delete this console log here. And now let's go ahead back to our profile action and add some logic here to handle our form submission to Strapi. So now let's navigate to source data to services and we're gonna create a new file called mutatedata.ts. And inside here, we are going to go ahead and find this snippet. Let's copy the code and let's paste it in here. And here what we're doing is we're getting our base URL. We're making sure we're checking if the auth token exists. If there's no auth token, go ahead and throw an error. And here we're just going to make a request of the method that we provide and the path and the payload. And this is gonna make it easier for us to reuse this function to make calls to other endpoints. Now that we have it, let's go back to our action and we go to profile actions and let's go ahead and use it. So here after payload, we're going to say const response data will await mutate data. Let's import it here from the top, import mutate data. And that's from our data slash services. And that's mutate data. And we're going to make a put request to update and we're going to hit our users endpoint and provide the payload. And taking a look at the blog post provided, you'll be able to find these code snippets. And here after we call our mutate data function, let's grab the remainder of the code. So here we're doing some basic error checking. If there's an issue, return a message, oops, something went wrong. If we get response data that error, that means there was an error from Strapi. So we could go ahead and return it as Strapi errors and show it in the front end. And we're going to flatten our response. So let's go ahead and import flatten attribute helper function here. So right after I mutate data, I'm gonna say import flatten attributes. And that's coming from our at libs at uh, utils. Perfect, and this here looks correct. So here we're going to return our updated uh, form. So now let's go ahead and give it a try. But first let's navigate to our profile form. If you scroll back to the top and here you can see that we are importing our strappy errors. So let's go ahead and use it. And we're going to use the form state to get our error from our profile action here. So if you scroll down here, you could see if there's a response data that error. That means there's a strappy error, so that's gonna go ahead and return it. So here in our profile form, we're gonna use that form state to access that data. And here on the bottom, we're going to say strappy errors. Let's pass the form state. If there's errors, let's go ahead and show them the strappy errors. So now let's try to submit a form. If I click update profile, we get forbidden. And that's because we need to give strappy permission. So back in our Strapi admin, navigate to settings, roles on the user's permissions, go to authenticated, navigate to user's permission, and let's say we want to give the update permission. One caveat here is that when we do give this update permission, any logged in user is able to update not only their own user data, but somebody else's data. Obviously that's not secure, but this is something that we're just gonna do for the sake of this example. But in the later video, I'm gonna show you how to add a policy to our user's permission plugin in Strapi, which will basically allow you to check first if someone is trying to update somebody else's information, it will be prevented. But this is something that we're going to handle in a different tutorial because I wanna focus as much as I can on Next.js here. So let's go ahead and save. Let's go back to our summarized form and I'm gonna say, Polly Berry, still funny, I don't know why. Click update profile, noise forbidden went away. And if we go back to our Strapi admin, check out our user, we could see that we have updated our profile information. So now that we have our profile form ready to go, in the next video, we're going to take a look how to create our image upload function to allow our users to update their avatar image. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next one.